Good morning, everyone. I'm George Alexeyev, Director of the Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment. I want to welcome you all here to the Children's Health Symposium. This is our second annual Children's Health Symposium. Actually, it's probably our fifth or sixth, but we, we reinitiated them last year when we um, also took over the Children's Health Program for California EPA. So this is our second, second, beginning our second year as um, being in charge of the Children's Health Program with uh, Mark Miller as the Children's Health Program Director. And I wanted to thank, first off, just start by thanking the organizers of this symposium. Uh, these kinds of symposiums actually take a lot of work and uh, to particularly to have the type of speakers that we're going to be hearing for the next two days. I want to thank um, Dr. Melanie Marty and Dr. Mark Miller and Dr. Amy Kyle for all the work they did in putting this together. And I also really want to thank all the sponsoring and contributing organizations, because even three people can't do all this. And uh, aside from our office, uh, we had the Pediatric Environmental Health Specialty Unit at the University of California, San Francisco. Um, we had the Center for Integrative Research on Childhood Leukemia at the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, the Center for Environmental Research on Children's Health at the University of California at Berkeley. The Center for Child and Environmental Health Risk Research at the University of Washington. Uh, the, the Northwest Pediatric Environmental Health Specialty Unit of the University of Washington. The MIND Institute at the University of California, Davis. The University of Southern California Children's Health Center. And Berkeley Stanford Children's Environmental Health Center. Oh, there's more. Uh, also, the UCSF. Uh, Pregnancy Exposure to Environmental Contaminants Formative Center, and the Superfund Research Program. And there probably were more, but uh, I really want to thank all these participating uh, organizations for all the help they've done in terms of thinking about the program, how we should deliver the information, and also for um, the information that you're going to be contributing today. So I just thought I would start a little bit with a little bit uh, wetting your appetite of some of the things that we're doing here uh, in OWEA and Cali PA. Um, and particularly since today's topic is uh, cumulative health impacts on children's environmental health. Uh, we've been working on uh, this issue of cumulative impacts for several years now. And in uh, 2010, we released a report you see on the left, which was talking about developing some sort of a uh, foundational science for how we, we, we would approach cumulative impacts in California. And since that time, we were working on uh, actually following through on that foundation. And you can see on the right our latest draft, which actually came out on uh, January 3rd, which uh, talks about what we're calling um, the Cal Enviro screen, which is basically a way of looking at a lot of different exposures and vulnerabilities within the state of California to help us prioritize our activities. Just to briefly mention, uh, we have a model that we looked at, these four components where we look at burdens of pollution, either through ex uh, direct exposures or environmental effects. And then we have population characteristics of vulnerability, which include sensitive populations and probably in the more traditional sense that we think of it, and also socioeconomic factors. So just to see, this is, these are the in, what we call indicators in the model. So we selected data from throughout the state. And part of our analysis is truly a statewide analysis. Uh, so we took data that was available throughout the state and brought it together in a, a cumulative fashion. And you can see on the exposures, I'll just mention some of these, I'll be talking about these briefly in a minute. On the exposure side, we have uh, PM 2.5 concentration, ozone concentrations, diesel PM, uh, pesticide use, uh, toxic releases from facilities, and traffic density. And on the environmental effects side, we have uh, cleanup sites, uh, contaminated um, contam groundwater threats, um, impaired water bodies, and uh, solid, solid waste sites, and also hazardous waste facilities. And then on the sensitive populations, presence of children and elderly, um, asthma emergency department uh, visits, and also we have uh, low birth weight. And then finally, on socioeconomic factors, we have educational attainment, linguistic isolation, uh, percent poverty, and uh, 
racial ethnicity. So these are sort of the indicators we use in our model, and if you wanted to go to our website to look at this more carefully, uh, you're welcome to. In fact, we have a comment period open right now till the end of the month, so we, we would appreciate any comments you have on the model. But now I'd like to talk to you a little about some of the results and some of the thinking. We're going kind of beyond the results and thinking through trying to understand them a little bit here. So this is what we're calling, uh, this is the score for the statewide. And the darker the blue, the more, the higher the score it is. So basically, the greater combined impact from exposures and uh, vulnerability. But it's kind of hard to see this on the screen. So in this next slide, this is just the top 10% of the scores. So you can see a lot of focus in the valley here in Sacramento or nearby Sacramento, also Los Angeles area. And let's go into this a little bit more. Here is uh, the Los Angeles area. So you can see you can, we, our analysis was done by zip code, just so you know, that was our, our data size, our geographic size. And you can see certain areas within Los Angeles that are, uh, have a greater score than others. And this is when we look at just the 10% of the state that happens to reside within the Los Angeles area. So you can see some of the, uh, we can isolate that to see some of the more impacted areas. Now I want to talk a little about children. So one of the indicators was the presence of sensitive populations, children and elderly. And this is sort of the distribution or the higher, the, of, of children within the state. And again, this is the number of children under 10 uh, within zip codes. So the darker green indicates those areas, those zip codes that have a higher presence of children. And you can see sort of where, how they're distributed throughout the state. Now, we did some correlations, and I'm just going to throw these out there. This is for thinking about. Uh, and you can see that under looking at correlations between the presence of children and no high school education within the household, uh, the correlation coefficient is uh, 0.54. And then you look at linguistic isolation. That's where no one in the household speaks English well above, you know, no adult in the household speaks English well. Uh, and that's 0.55. And then race ethnicity, you see a correlation of 0.65 in terms of uh, people of color. So this just gives you a little bit of understanding of the types of uh, uh, vulnerable populations we're talking about. And then on the right side here, uh, we, the correlation between the presence of children and the pollution burden score, so those communities that are the highest impact, it's 0.5. Uh, and then with the population characteristic score, that's the vulnerability. So the presence of children and the other vulnerability characteristics, it's 0.55. And finally, with the overall score, the presence of children, uh, the correlation is 0.63. So this just tells us that uh, children are uh, being there are within these impacted areas around the state. So let's look a little bit more. So let's just talk about the zip codes that are within the top 10% of the total burden score. So you can see that there's, we're just beginning to analyze this. And any thoughts you have on things we can do would be, would be great. Um, and so you can see that the median number of children in a zip code within the top 10% of the, of the burden scores is 16%. So 16% of that population within those um, are under 10. In contrast, if you look at the, the state as a whole, uh, the average percentage is 11.8%. And the numbers is, are far smaller, 7,000 versus uh, 1,700. Just again, there's a large presence of children in these burdened communities. Now let's talk just a brief bit about asthma. So this is uh, the asthma distribution throughout the state. And again, the darker colors represent a greater number of, of emergency department visits for asthma. And it's, this is age-adjusted age per 10,000. <clears> and then let's look at the top 10% of those zip codes um, with asthma emergency room visits. So you can see the distribution throughout the state, and you can see, um, you know, you can see it's in various parts, and then if we focus in on the far upper left there of the 
uh, Bay Area, for example, if you're familiar with the Bay Area, uh, you'll probably see that that kind of makes a certain amount of sense, those locations, Hunter's View Bay Point, along the Alameda Corridor, uh, Richmond, and then also the Concord uh, Antioch area. And then if you look in the Los Angeles area, you can see that corridor right there of asthma incidents along the freeway corridors there. That was asthma overall. Let's look at asthma, uh, just children. Or actually, the last one was children. This is, uh, was, this is asthma for children. Asthma children, emergency room visits. So you can see their distribution throughout the state. Yeah, so that one was all, all asthma cases. This is the distribution of children going to the emergency room, um, age adjusted still for asthma. And you can see again the locations throughout the state. And then this is a close up here. And again, we can look at the, the lower, lower left is, well, Fresno, which many of you are investigating and looking at. Um, Upper right is the San Francisco Bay Area, and then over on the lower right is uh, the Los Angeles area. So this is, again, just something for us to, to think about. And then if we just look at that same data, but just the top 5%, uh, I mean, sorry, top 10%, then you can get a better sense as to where sort of the, the greater impacts appear to be in terms of uh, children and emergency room visits for asthma. So I just wanted to mention those things of some of the data that we're looking at and uh, we're trying to think through what are the issues here and I look forward to all the presentations today to help us uh, consider these types of things. Thank you very much.